Hi, I'm Chris Gould with Geeks On Tour, and this is Fun With Photos. In today's Google Photos tutorial, I want to teach you a bit about face groups and albums, where they're similar, where they're different. They are a way to organize groups of photos. And I want to start with albums. So how do you make an album? Well, there's two ways. You can either start with the photos and make an album, or you can make an album and then add the photos. I like the first way. So we went scuba diving on Saturday and I want to select a couple photos. So I'm going to select one, select two, select three, and then I click the plus. This is on the computer. I'll show you on the phone in a minute. I click the plus and say I want to make an album. And I want to make a new album. I don't want to add these to an existing album. New album and you give it a title. And you click the check mark to be done. So I now have an album. Now where did that album go? Well on the web it is under this option called albums. So here is the Saturday Dive album that I just made. Now on the phone you find albums under this menu item called collections and there is albums and there is the Saturday Dive album that I just made. But I want to show you how you can create this on the phone as well. So I'm going to delete this album. Now have I deleted the photos inside the album? No. They are stored in your main Google Photos library. Albums are just ways to view a group together, a group that you specify. So let's try that again with the phone. I am now looking at my photos and I can select by touch and hold. And as soon as it's selected, this add to pops up. But I want to select a couple more. There, I have four selected now. I tap plus and album. One other difference on the phone, as soon as I touch album, it assumes I want to make a new album. So if that's not what you meant, you needed to make sure to select an existing album. And I will type Saturday Dive and check mark. So I now have this album under Collections and Albums. There is the Saturday Dive. Now, you could also create a blank album from scratch on either the computer or the phone by tapping on the plus and album. Now I just have a blank album and I can select photos to put in it. As I say, I prefer the selecting the photos first. So what if you wanted to make an album just of one person? So if I'm making an album of Jim, I might select that picture and then I would select that picture and that picture and then I could add to an album and Jim. But I have thousands of pictures of Jim. This is going to take me hours and hours and hours. Don't you think that maybe Google's AI might do a better job? And that is called face groupings or people and pets. And on the phone, you find it under collections and people and pets. And there is Jim. And here are hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures where Jim is in the picture. How does Google Photos do that? It can recognize faces and then it just says in another picture, oh, this face is the same as that face. And it puts them in this view. It's just a grouping. and It's not an official album. Under collections on the phone, collections and people and pets versus collections and albums. Now on the computer, you have people and pets under explore and there they are and albums has its own menu item called albums.
If you don't see people and pets, it might be because of a setting. So if you go to your settings, the gear wheel, and group similar faces, face groups, that must be on. If you don't even have the setting, you might be in a country that doesn't support it. This isn't available in all countries. On the phone, the setting is just in a slightly different place. You tap on your profile picture in the top right, photos, settings, and then preferences and group similar faces. And that must be on. I want to show you a face grouping of my dog, Odie, what you can do when there are faces that don't match. So isn't that fun? You can have pets as, as the face group. So here is Odie, but this picture is not Odie. Well, I can fix that. You know, Google tries its best, but it makes a lot of mistakes when it comes to this face grouping. I can select it, not open it. Don't open it. You, that doesn't work. You have to select it, long press, touch and hold, and then this one also is not Odie. So I've selected two. That one is not Odie, and that one is not Odie. Touch the three dot and remove photos. All that does is remove it from the face grouping. It does not delete those pictures from your library. And it tries to learn, so you need to tell it that was the wrong, wrong animal and submit. Now that is gone from there. Now, why would you want to have a grouping of one person's face? Well, there's several reasons. Maybe it's a person who is graduating college and you want to have a slideshow of all your pictures of them. Maybe it's a memorial service and you want to have a slideshow going. Maybe you just want to give a birthday present of a photo book of all the photos you have of you and this person. That's what the face grouping is for. For my mom's memorial service, I went to her her face grouping, and I have thousands. I don't want all of these playing in a slideshow. So I'm going to make my own album. An album is something you have control over. This face grouping is an automatic feature of Google Photos. So I'll pick that one and that one. And I can just go through all of these until I have the selection that I think is good enough. Tap the plus and make an album. So you get the idea. An album is something that you have control over. You can decide what to put in it. You can take photos out of it. You can also ask Google to make an album that automatically collects all of the photos of a person, and then you can remove the ones you don't want. I think it's easier to go through and select the ones you do want. Another reason to make an album of all photos of a person is if you want to give that bunch of photos to the person. I've had several mothers and grandmothers ask me, how can I give all of the photos I have of my kids to them? How do I give all of my photos of somebody to that person? The key to this technique is that both you and the person you're giving the photos to must be using Google Photos. If you are, it's incredibly easy. Let me show you how. This could be done on a mobile device, but I think it'll be easier to see on the computer. So I'm on a web browser and I go to my Google Photos. The first thing is to find the face grouping of the person you want because Google has already done most of the work for you. So this is Alan, and I'm going to be sending all of these photos to Alan. All I have to do is click where it says Share as Album. It's creating an album for me. I'll give the album a name and then click Share up in the upper right. Notice because I'm starting with the face grouping, it's automatically adding new photos of that same face. 
That's cool. Now I just tell it who I want to send it to. And there's Alan right there. If the person you want isn't showing up immediately on your list, just type it, start typing the name or email up here. Alan and send. Now, Alan will be receiving the notice that you've sent this album of photos to him, but you can still make additions, changes, deletions. It will be dynamic. Whenever he opens it, he will see whatever you've done. So, for example, I have two of the same one. I'm going to remove this one from the album. I'm not deleting it from my library. I still have that picture, but it no need to send him two. Lots of duplicates in here. So I'm just deleting a few. And now I click the three dot menu and remove from album. And by the same token, I could add other pictures. If there was pictures that didn't get included in the face grouping, or I want to send pictures of something else. What happens on Alan's end? So now I am signed into Google Photos with Alan's account. And if I look in the sharing section, I will see that album of Chris's photos of Al Alan. I can look at any of them I want. I can peruse the album to my heart's content, but they are not in my library until I save them. I can save, I could save just one picture. It is now copied to Alan's library. But if I am looking at the album and I click on this little cloud, save photos, now the entire album has been saved to Alan's library. They go in order by date taken. So if a photo was taken in 2010, it will show up down in 2010. So how is Alan going to see all the photos that I sent to him? You have to click on explore on a mobile that would be re search and then recently added. Now it has changed the photo order to show all the ones that were added today versus the ones that were taken today. Now it's easy to see all of the photos that were sent in that album and Alan can make his own album. I click on one end, I shift click on the other. I have selected 52 pictures that were all added today and I click the plus and make my own album, new album, and I will give it a name of Photos of Alan from Chris. And I have successfully now sent Alan all the pictures from my library and he has copied them to his library.